All right. And so we are going to be getting started with cultivating donor and client relationships with Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And I do want to give just one second to thank Microsoft for their support and um, participation in developing this webinar. And a little bit about the presenters today. My name is Kyla Hunt. I'm the webinar program manager here at TechSoup Global. And I'm going to be the facilitator. With us is Sean Michael from Empower Northwest and Sri Ramallah from Washington STEM. And they're going to be talking a lot about Microsoft Dynamics CRM, its different functionalities and implementation. And also assisting with chat today is Gretchen Dio from Microsoft, Becky Wiegand, and Tony Anderson, both from TechSoup Global. So you might see their names pop up in the, in the chat or questions pane, or if there are specific questions that Gretchen can answer, she might be popping in in the audio as well. And so again, a little bit about today's agenda. We're first going to be hearing from Sean, talk about the functionality, integration of Microsoft Dynamics CRM, and where to find help. And then Sri is going to be talking about Washington STEM's implementation of Dynamic CRM. Washington STEM is the organization that Sri is from. And we're going to be talking, we're going to be handling questions from the audience a little bit in the middle of the webinar and then also at the end. And if for some reason we don't get to your question, we'll follow up with you after the webinar. And so to get us started, I do want to take just a couple of seconds and find out a little bit about you. And so first I'm going to ask, what is your primary, primary role in your organization? And so your options are executive management, program management, fund development, direct service, and technology. So I'll give you just a couple of seconds to answer that. And it looks like almost 75% or over 75% of you have responded. So I'm going to be closing this in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. So taking a look at that, it looks like 47% of you, your primary role is technology. So that's really, really good to know um, for us to be able to speak to you. And then 17% of your executive management, 15% program management, and then 11% fund development, and 9% direct service. So that will really help, I believe, um, especially Sean in, in speaking to uh, the people who are actually at this webinar. So thank you for that. And then the second question, how many systems do you use to manage donors? And so I'll give you a couple of seconds to answer that. And your options are 1, <laughs> 2 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 or more. And then I did add none in case you are just somebody who is informing the technology deciders or those who manage systems. And I'll give you just a couple more seconds to answer that. I'll be closing it in five, four, three, two, one. And it looks like the vast majority of you are um, managing or using two to five systems to manage donors. 15% um, of you are using one, 11% are using six to 10, and then 11 or, it's interesting, the 11 or more and none are about even at four and 6%. So that's really, really helpful, everybody. Thank you for sharing that information about who you are and where you're coming from. And with that, I am going to go ahead and give control to Sean so she can take it away from her end. Hi, everybody. It's really great to see um, the list of folks that are, that are on, um, on the call today. And I'm really excited about this webinar. Um, some, some of you may actually know a bit about the history of um, Dynamic CRM and 
the work that has been done to make it available and cost effective for nonprofits over the years. Um, so I'm going to kind of catch everybody up who, who has been following the progress and also for those that are new to Dynamic CRM and are wondering how it can be applied in, in your nonprofit, um, we'll, we'll give you a, a, a quick run through of the functionality and look at how do you proactively manage your data. So not just the capture with data and, field, data and fields, but also how, do you, how are you able to analyze and proactively manage your relationships. So the first thing that I want to talk about um, with Dynamics is that it is available both as a hosted and as an on-premise solution. Um, and what, what that means is that you can have a server on, at your location that you can load Dynamics CRM on, and your staff can access it um, either it, within your own network or via a web connection to your own server. The other option is to have Microsoft host your instance of Dynamics CRM, in which case you are not having to manage the server at all. You are just using the application as a service. Um, the third option is that there are Microsoft partners that will host an, an on-premise version for you, but they will host it on their server. So that's another option. Um, and one question I get asked a lot um, when people are evaluating whether Dynamics CRM works for them or not and if it's going to work for them long term is, um, if at a later date I decide that I want a different platform, can I move it? And the simple answer is yes. You can move it from one platform to another. So that's just, just to let you know that that, um, that, that can occur. Um, and I'm going to be talking about where you can get your licensing later on in this presentation. Okay, so a little bit about a little bit about um, the functionality that's available within Dynamics in, for the nonprofit sector specifically. Uh, there is, of course, the relationship management. There's donor management. So that was the first set of functionality that was developed for use in the nonprofit sector. Um, since then, there has been additional um, work around grant management, campaign and events management, volunteer management, and more. I'm going to be going through those in more detail. Empower Northwest offers planning and implementation support for the nonprofit solution on Dynamics CRM. So I want to talk a little bit about using information as opposed to just capturing data. The data that you capture, whether it is in a spreadsheet or it's in a um, donor management database or in a CRM, are things like the first name, the last name, gender, marital status, amount of donations, the date that a donation was given, the campaign that it was given under, possibly even the program that it should be allocated to. To analyze that data, you have to have a way to be able to look at it other than simply in columns and rows. And, and actually, let me take a step back. There are some who prefer to look at the data in, in columns and rows, and you can certainly do that within Dynamics CRM. But what has been developed are what are called dashboards. Um, and anyone who has used any kind of a, um, a larger CRM or fiscal management product probably has seen dashboards. What is unique about Dynamics CRM is that you can create these dashboards to analyze the data in many, many different ways. It's very, very flexible. And you can analyze user-defined or specific data that you decide that you want to capture that isn't captured in the in the previous um, in the in the out-of-the-box solution. So I'm going to talk a little bit about relationship management. And relationships can be with organizations, such as in this example, and it can be with individuals in the screenshot examples that I just pulled up. And in those, for those relationships, we have an organization. And you can see that you can track activities, connections to other individuals and organizations, donations and pledges that are related to that organization, preferred methods of contact, et cetera. And you're not limited to that. 
if, for example, you want to track um, the office size of a given organization, you can create a field and capture that data as well. Even more important, you can set up workloads to remind you to communicate with the organizations and the constituents that you want to communicate with. Whether it is a reminder that you, you should be calling this organization to, to make an ask, or it's a reminder to talk to this constituent about possibly volunteering for an event, you can set up activities well in advance and integrate them into your planning of your time. You can also proactively manage your relationships with constituents and or organizations with the use of lists. And lists can be anything from, these are the people who attended our gala event last year, but who didn't give. Or it could be, these are the people that are interested in environmental projects. I'm going to move on to donations and pledges. Um, and one thing I'd like to note is that if you have very specific questions or need um, specific demonstrations, we will be we're going to be happy to um, to do more of that outside of the webinar. Um, but we are limited a bit in time, and and um, over the years we've added enough functionality to where it's really a tight fit to fit all of the functionality into 20 minutes. So please forgive me if I'm going a little bit fast. So in talking about donations and pledges, I want to talk a little bit about what do, you, what do you track in relation to a pledge or a promise to pay. You may track some kind of an indicator so that you can track it internally that makes sense to you. You may track it against a particular individual and or a household organization. And so that's, that's a key point is that you can track a donation independent of an organization and specifically with an individual or a household. You can track different pledge types. What kind of a pledge is this going to be? Is this going to be cash? Is it going to be goods and services? Is it going to be time? You can track cash value of gifts and the actual cash amount of gifts as well. So in this screenshot, I'm showing you the actual donations and volunteer hours with a couple of examples. What you'll notice over on the left-hand side is that you also have the ability, as I said earlier, to track in-kind gifts. On a pledge itself, you can also set up what are called recurring or multiple payment pledges. And over time, you can track how many of those pledges are submitted and how many are actually received. So you can see in this particular example that you have a total pledge amount of $1,000. And you have $1,000 that has been collected. And there is zero that is outstanding. You can set up a pledge, for example, that is $1,000 with 10 payments of $100 each. And the system will calculate that out for you, whether it is monthly, bimonthly, semi-annual, etc. You'll also note that you can track your pledge towards a particular campaign and or towards a particular program. Within the donation record, which is the actual payment of or scheduled payment towards a pledge, you can track even further detail. You can say what, again, how was that donation received? What was the payment method? You can be as granular as you like. You can have a distribution of the donations towards different campaigns if you like. You can have, again, multiple donation records for a given pledge. So talking a little bit about grants management. A grant is and I, what I am discussing at this point are incoming grants. So incoming grants are grants that are promised to you by a funder of some sort. A grantor could be a corporate foundation. It could be a household. It could be an individual. 
in this example that I have up, you can see that, the, that we have a 2012 capacity grant, and it's being made in the name of Empower Northwest. And the primary constituent associated with that grant is Sean Michael. Sorry, I took, I took credit for this one. You can say who, what program and campaign it is associated with. And again, you can say what the pledge frequency is. So in this case, I said that they are going to give cash in the total value amount of $10,000, but it's going to be split up semi-annually. And the system will calculate the grant payments that are scheduled to come in. In addition to the actual payments, you can also track all of your tasks that are associated with a grant. So in this example, I created a task called Grant Report Due with a specific due date. Within the task itself, you can get very granular and say, a grant report is due, and these are the things that I want to talk about in this particular grant report. So for those who are trying to figure out what to write in that grant report six months down the road, you could be accumulating your grant information within the task itself, as well as attaching documents that you're going to want to refer to. Talking about campaign and events management a bit, a campaign is defined as a collection of efforts that you need to, um, that you need to accomplish and you want to measure your success again. So a campaign can be a direct mail campaign, an annual capital campaign, or a gala event. Within that campaign itself, you can track all of your planning activities. So it's a great project management tool for those activities. You can track all of your campaign activities in terms of your outreach. So you sent a direct mail campaign, you did an email blast, you did a phone-a-thon. You're able to track your campaign responses. And note who is attending an event or who is responding positively towards your campaign. And probably more important than anything else is you can be watching and analyzing the success of, you, of your efforts over time. So you can quickly see what events or campaigns or campaign activities are producing the results that you need to, that you need to use going forward in your campaign planning. Talking a little bit about volunteer management now, I want to talk about the way that people track their volunteers. So one of the first items around volunteer management is just the tracking of hours. And so in this case, what I, what I have up is an example of a record where you can track that this volunteer helped, helped during a cleanup project and you can track the volunteer hours and the date. Over time, you're able to accumulate the volunteer history for a particular volunteer and what programs and or campaigns were associated with their volunteer time. And going a bit further, you can track specific skills that volunteers have. So kind of going back to the concept of managing your relationships, if you're trying to manage your relationships with your volunteers in a proactive manner, you may want to contact Sean when there is a particular event that needs help coordinating. And you would know that by tracking specific skills and looking at the history of the types of um, work that they helped with in the past.
want to talk a little bit about integration. Integration is key to the success of, um, of any organization using their systems. And one of the reasons that I asked, um, that we asked the question earlier about how many systems you are using to track this myriad of, of data is to identify that, that pain point that can exist if you are not able to easily integrate your systems together. So for example, um, what we have run into many times when people are evaluating whether Dynamics is the right solution for them is this question of integrating with their email system. So this is, and, and I will say that the gross majority of the folks that we work with, although not all, um, are using Outlook as their email client. They're also using Outlook to track their calendar items and their tasks. Dynamics CRM works completely within Outlook and integrates tightly with Outlook in a couple of different ways. The first way that I have up here in this part of the screen is that you can see within Outlook itself, you have full access to everything that is within Dynamics CRM. You do not have to go to a different user interface. And once you have the Outlook connector set up, you do not have to log into a separate interface. So in fact, a user reduces their, what I call, ramp up time significantly by simply using the Outlook connector. They don't have to learn a new interface. The other way that you can, um, you can integrate within between Dynamics CRM and your Outlook is that as you receive an email, you can choose to track it in CRM, or you can have the system set up to synchronize it automatically. That can be done with your emails, with your tasks, with your calendar appointments, and with your contacts. Now what we found in actuality is that people want some of their data is synced, but possibly not all of their data is synced. So again, you can filter that down or simply select one by one which record that you choose to sync into those. In addition, from Outlook itself, you can create all of your CRM records directly. You don't have to, again, go into a different interface to do that. So the huge time saver. Three more systems I want to talk about uh, that integrations are available and or are being built for um, are Eventbrite, Vertical Response, and QuickBooks. And reviewing what the most used systems were by nonprofits, um, we identified that these were the three systems that most small nonprofits are using. And many medium-sized nonprofits are using. So these were the three that we, we focused in on. So the link app between Dynamics CRM and QuickBooks, and specifically the QuickBooks Nonprofit Edition, will allow you to take your donation data that you're collecting in Dynamics CRM and integrate directly into QuickBooks, eliminating, eliminating duplicate data entry. The second is Eventbrite. And Eventbrite is a tool that is used for online event registration. While you can custom program your dynamic CRM instance to allow for online event registration, it is often cheaper, and I don't mean cheaper in a bad way, maybe inexpensive is a better word, but it's often much more cost effective to use the Eventbrite tool to do the online event registration and then download the data into your dynamic CRM. The same can be, can be said of vertical response, which is a mass email tool. The other great advantage that using a mass email tool gives you over, over sending email directly through Outlook to large groups of people is that it helps to protect you from being blacklisted as a spammer. There are requirements that are, that are available. You can read a little bit more about it, and perhaps we can send a link about it after this webinar, about how do you not get blacklisted as a spammer. Okay. 
some other cool features that I know that I'm, I'm starting to run down on my time here, so I want to make sure I, I get through the last couple of slides here. Uh, some cool features, obviously, we have those real-time dashboards that you can design, and those dashboards can be user-specific. So a fund development director can see something different than an executive director. You have visualizations or charts in line. And I'll just hit on a couple of other items that I think are, are particularly relevant to the nonprofit sector. You have help visors. These are help systems or help that is shown at the top of each primary screen that can help users when they are questioning how to actually perform a task within Dynamics CRM. And you can have revenue goals so that you can be watching how, you're, how you are um, doing trying to reach those goals. And the last, the last thing that I want to leave you with is that there are resources um, for licensing. On-premise dynamic CRM is available through the Microsoft Nonprofit Software Donations Program via TechSoup. So I strongly encourage you to take advantage of that. There's just huge, huge cost savings there. Hosted dynamic CRM is also available at a reduced price. It's at $9.99 per user per month for eligible nonprofit organizations. For installation, configuration, and support, of course, Impeller Northwest offers these services. But you also have a large community of Microsoft partners that can also provide those services. There are additional applications. So the examples that I gave you were the integration apps. But there are additional applications at both CodePlex and Pinpoint. And last but certainly not least, and in fact, I encourage people to, to reach out to the user community and to participate in the user community as you're using a system so that everybody can learn how to use it in ways that improve the entire sector. And with that, I'll hand it over to Sri. Thanks, Sean. Um, we do have a few questions that have come in, actually quite a few questions that have come in. And um, before we get to three section, I just want to um, take a moment and ask a couple of those questions. Um, okay. Let's see. So um, the first question that came in was from Claire, and she was asking, is it possible to change the currency used um, from dollars, yes. I guess, to something else? Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay. Good to know. Is there is there any kind of um, limit to is, is it like a set? Um, 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 you can you can actually set <laughs> up your own currencies, which is which is nice. It gives okay. you a lot of flexibility. Okay, I'm glad you do. What I was asking. Um, uh, <laughs> Julie was asking, um, can volunteers be scheduled on a calendar with Dynamic CRM? Absolutely. Yes, you can set appointments and have um, constituents, volunteers, donors, et cetera, be invited to those, those appointments and or tasks even. OK, great. And Nancy was wondering, is there a membership function or module? There sure is. Um, and I didn't focus on that as much today, um, but you can absolutely track members and member benefits as well. OK. Great. And we do have a lot of questions um, about the integration. Um, first of all, um, Dave just wanted clarification that you, that you were saying that the three tools that you mentioned are currently available and integrated with Dynamic CRM, correct? The three tools are available. QuickBooks, Eventbrite, and Vertical Response are all available independently. And the integration um, between each of them, there are tools that are available for all three. Um, and there, yeah, there is development of a couple of them that are going to be announced publicly at NTC um, the week of April 2nd. Um, and those are the Eventbrite and the Vertical Response. The QuickBooks is available now. 
Okay, great. And we have a couple of other questions just asking if there are other tools that are integrated with Dynamic CRM. I know we had one specific question on if it was integratable with uh, MailChimp um, or if there are any other tools available. Right. Great question. And I would say, um, you know, the, the, the three tools that we, that we decided to focus on were the ones that, that you know, were most prominent. But um, with that being said, you can certainly integrate with anything else that either has an API or can import and export data. So MailChimp is one of those. So it, it, it is totally possible to do. Okay, great. And then um, one last question I was going to ask, and this is also um, about integration. Blanca asks, can um, Dynamic CRM integrate with their website? You can, and it depends, it depends on how you want to integrate, which, which dictates how much effort it will take to make that integration happen. So, for example, if you want to capture new um, people that are interested in something, um, or people that are interested in um, or want to sign up for your mailing list and that type of thing. That is a fairly simple integration. Um, if you want to go um, into a more a deeper integration with real-time updating of data and so forth, it might be a little bit more effort. And it also, of course, depends upon you know what platform you're using for your website. Okay. Great, thanks for that clarification. And um, we do have other questions, but I do want to give Sri um, a chance to talk to her section. So all the other questions that have come in, we will get back to those at the end of the presentation. And so I'm going to give Sri control. Sri, go ahead and share your screen and unmute yourself. Great. Um... Hello, everyone. My name is Sri Ramallah from Washington STEM. Um, really excited to be co-presenting with Sean um, today um, and kind of share our story, essentially where we are in our CRM implementation and, um, and the work that we have done to date. So Sean and I have been working together very closely over the last few months. Um, and in order to get our team onboarded, and um, define our needs from a CRM perspective. So quickly, um, a little bit about Washington STEM, for those who don't know, is um, Washington STEM is a new nonprofit venture philanthropy that focuses on STEM education in Washington State. We, um, we partner with educators, business leaders, community leaders together so that we can ignite breakthrough ideas and powerful partnerships around advancing innovation, equity, and excellence around STEM education for all students in Washington State, um, with a specific focus on the underserved, under, underrepresented, and underserved communities um, for STEM education. So um, we actually are just a little um, over, actually, a year old. We just celebrated our one-year anniversary in March. Um, and the organization was um, actually conceptualized out of a two-year business planning um, stage. Um, and to date, um, so what's really unique about us is that, so we, we were created out of the Washington State Business Roundtable where business um, leaders came together and um, said, what is it that they're going to do around um, improving education in Washington State and this focus around STEM education. So during that two-year business planning process, nearly um, $20 million of commitments came together with leading funders such as Microsoft, Boeing, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And also during that two-year business planning um, process, what's important to note is that we started to gather essentially who were the constituents and who were the organizations that we needed to partner with um, and in, or, in order to create the reach that we needed to. So we are both a... Um, we are an investing arm in education, so we have multiple levels of grant making, and through this grant making, we will learn what's happening in the field and share that with as many people in Washington State to reach our um, student and teacher outcomes. So to date, we have done $2.6 million in investments, reached about 300 teachers and 11,000 students across Washington in our first year. And of course, we want to see those numbers um, dramatically go, grow um, through our work. 
So as I mentioned, um, we have multiple levels of strategies. Um, interlocking strategies. We invest in education. We want to generate new knowledge and capacity building through our investments and share our knowledge um, through multiple channels, both online and offline, in order to reach um, more and more teachers and educators and students and parents um, through that knowledge. We want to engage communities and families around STEM education, and then we want to play an active advocacy role around what we're learning um, through our investments that will actually influence um, and create effective uh, education policies. Um, so this is really important to understand in the sense that we, we invest, but we also need to engage um, many, many constituents and communities in order for us to have um, the, basically the impact that we're looking for across all students teachers um, in Washington State. So, like I mentioned, we came out, our organization was created out of a two-year business planning process. And um, during that time, um, when the organization kicked off, we had um, enormous amounts of spreadsheets of contacts and relationships um, that came from the, the team, the consultant team who um, helped with the creation of the organization. So many, many business planning meetings, community partner meetings that led to who was it that we needed to create relationships with. So we were in a state of, um, when the organization first launched, of essentially Excel spreadsheet overload. Um, and so it was really important for us to get up and running um, using a CRM tool fairly quickly. Um, and we sat down and actually tried to understand what were our immediate CRM needs, so build what we need now, and um, in the future that we would roll on in future phases, grow um, our CRM capabilities. But at, at first glance, we needed a one-stop tool for our organization's contacts and relationships. We needed to easily manage and track um, our contacts, like who in our team was contacting various donors, business partnerships, our what we call um, our funded partners, so selling, um, calling um, our investments grantees. We really see them partners in our work, so we call them funded partners, um, education advocates, and community partners. Um, we needed to have easily create easily um, to be able to easily create reports, such as um, reports on our donors and our prospects management. Um, we need all of our staff to be easily, um, to easily access the CRM tool and be able to search and add and modify contacts. Um, and then also, as we are looking at what is our reach in our state and how are we impacting the students and teachers that we need to impact, how do we have a 360 degree view of all contacts that are within the Washington STEM community? So those were our key needs. And um, how did we get started? So we had all these spreadsheets. And the first thing what we did was review what are the various CRM systems out there and what were the ones that were going to fit our needs. As Sean mentioned, there are various different um, options once you decide what CRM. And so we just, um, with kind of our strong partnership with Microsoft, but also looked at all the different um, what requirements um, our requirements, we decided to go with Microsoft CRM. We also reviewed um, basically the on-premise versus hosted solutions. And um, we decided because of our kind of startup nimble team that we wanted to really go down into the cloud-based hosted solution route. Um, we are not a huge staff. We're, um, we are 13 people right now, and we don't imagine to be much bigger than that. We have a few more open headcount. But it's really, for us, it was like, how can we have access to the online cloud-based solution no matter where we are? So that was really important for us. So as I mentioned, we were in swimming in spreadsheets. So it was important for us to get up and running really quickly. So we actually focused our initial effort on basically contact relationship management and fundraising management. We worked with Empower to implement the nonprofit solution, and then we went and imported over 3,000 contacts from various spreadsheets into our 
CRM solution. And then we worked with NPower to really understand what were the kind of fields that we needed to customize around our work, specifically on the constituent and the household organization forms. Um, and the first thing we did was really, we, we brainstormed internally as a team with our um, community engagement director in particular and our, um, our new, at that time, um, chief development officer, chief manage, managing our resources coming in the door because not only do we have investments that we need to make, but we have a, for um, our organization, a huge um, fundraising goal. We are about to kick off actually a multi-million dollar five-year campaign. Um, like I mentioned, we had $20 million committed, but not everything's come in the door. But we also need to raise um, a huge amount of money between now and the next five years so that we continue to make the investments that we can across the state. So what we did first was define what are the various relationships that a constituent or an organization can have towards Washington STEM. So what you see here on the screen is actually a constituent record. And um, some of the key things is that they can be a um, education partner. They can be a funder to us. They can be um, a, a business partner. So we tried to brainstorm all those so that we, when we are importing the spreadsheets, we had some sort of context of what were the relationship to Washington STEM. And then we started getting into, into essentially how is it that we're going to manage um, the cultivation of donors into our, our pipeline. So through donor management, there's multiple different phases um, that a prospective donor can go through until they actually have made the gift and then your continued relationship with them. So we really sat down with our chief development officer and tried to understand how is it that they want to be able to manage the relationships um, using CRM. And so we can essentially kind of created a process for moves management. Like how is it that when you first have a contact with someone, you're cultivating a relationship, you're then moving into a stage where um, you may be calling someone and sitting down for a meeting or talking through a, our strategy and that's really that pre-solicitation phase. And then maybe there's an ask for money, which is a solicitation phase that someone goes through. And then you're maybe waiting. You, there's maybe a period where you wait, let them come back and think about what's the gift that this business um, is going to make or an individual. And then try to identify who are the people who actually made gifts, who declined gifts, and what's the ongoing stewardship. So what we did was track, basically create these donor statuses um, that we can identify donors in. We also added additional fields called projected amount and the projected probability. So when we identify someone as a donor, we wanted to identify what kind of gift do we think this person is going to give? Is this a, um, you know, a twenty thousand dollar gift or is this a hundred fifty thousand dollar gift for our, our major business relationships? Um, and what's the projected probability that we think that they're going to come in at that level? And it's Important to note that that's actually um, what you don't see in this. What we actually implemented there was a um, a drop down. There's multiple stages. Basically, is that 100 percent, 75 percent, 50 percent, 25 percent, or zero percent probability. In the same vein, we walk through what are the various stages that we need to manage. Who are our investment prospects? Um, understand when someone applied but we actually were not able to give them a grant at this time so who and identify in all of our constituents who are our active funded partners so that we can actually manage communications and relationships with them really effectively and then manage who has been a funded partner with us but specifically at our entrepreneurial level these are one year grants um, that we give to teachers or a program or with their in-school or out-of-school program. And we want to understand who, as we grow our funded partners, these are really ambassadors for us in the field. So really understand who are our completed funded partners at this time as well. So we manage investments through this same sort of um, moves management process. And it's really important that, um, for example, we're currently have an open grant cycle. And as our everyone in our team 
needs to be able to be able to go into CRM and identify who are potential prospects that we want to come and apply for one of our um, multiple opportunities. So then we actually thought about what are the various at-a-glance reporting dashboards that we need in order for our team to understand what is our current state of both donor management as well as investment management. So this is actually pretty, um, the, what you're seeing right now is actually dummy data, so um, I, bear with us here, but because we actually just worked to implement this last week. Um, so we're in the stage of we're um, going in and actually putting in real data um, for, so that we can actually suck in the reporting um, dashboards uh, accordingly. But what we did was actually create th currently three different reporting dashboards. Um, one called donor management, so that we can actually see in the various different phases up until someone makes a gift, what is the projected amount that we have in each different phase and how that totals um, into our total projected amount um, right now. We can also look against, um, in a kind of a bar chart form, what at the various different phases, what's our probability that we think those different numbers are going to come in. So a great reporting dashboard for our resource development team to know what, you know, what chunk of um, people and chunk of money is sitting at what stage and how can they do at what point of the year are they um, close to actually moving people through the various phases to get commitments made. Um, we also created, so in the same vein, uh, you don't see it here on the screen, but it's actually fairly similar to the donor management, is how many people do we have in the prospect line and how many people have we actually gave gifts um, investments to and are actually our um, current funded partners versus uh, completed funded partners in, a, in an investment chart. We created another dashboard, which is a year-to-date gifts pledges, so that we can say what's currently that's outstanding, what's currently currently being processed and what's collected so that we can actually see this towards our annual um, goals. And then, as I mentioned, we're kicking off a five-year, multi-million dollar campaign. Um, we will be creating in the near future, when we're about to kick that off, another dashboard, which is the five-year campaign dashboard, so that we can actually report to our board of directors um, and have a quick glance of how we're doing against our five-year campaign. The last thing I wanted to um, go over is that we really wanted to enable our team to be able to go in and track their communications um, and activities with our constituents and our organization so that we really understand who is it that we are actually having um, a touch with on a regular basis and then how those, what are the um, activities that we needed to do to follow up to continue to develop those relationships. So what we're doing is actually having, um, using the Outlook integration that Sean mentioned earlier, is to actually enable the team to actually, any email conversations they have with key constituents, um, whether it's policymakers, education leaders, or our current funded partners, to actually use the track functionality within the Outlook integration ribbon and set it regarding the constituent or the organization that we're building a relationship with. Um, what that allows our team to do is go in and say, before they do another communication, say, within our team, what was the last meeting that we had with them? What was the follow-up activities? There, where were the meeting notes we're actually storing um, within um, CRM as well? And then recently, just here in the 2012, um, the last couple months, we actually kicked off two camp campaigns. And it was really important for us to understand what were all the communications and efforts and activities the team did against this campaign. So um, one of our funded partners was highlighted in a national campaign around um, a Samsung challenge. And what we were doing is activating our network and our channels to be able to have um, multiple communications go out so that we can have our network come and vote for one of our funded partners through an online campaign. And what people could do is come in and vote for um, Nia Bay High School and the video that they created um, on a daily basis for, I think it was about three and a half weeks. So we were sending out e-blasts. We were um, reaching out to our key constituents who we knew had 
um, great networks or blogs or social media channels, activate their social media channels. So as you can see here in the picture, we actually activated um, and created a campaign called the Neobain Samsung Challenge and asked people to record their activities against that challenge. Um, we're right at the stage since the challenge actually completed um, last week where we're going to be creating a report to see what were all the activities we did and how did it relate to votes going up. So as Sean mentioned, a, a campaign can have a various goals and we actually modified the Samsung Challenge to have a vote goal. What was our end vote, vote goal? And then looked at various activities and how did it, the dates of those activities and how it related to the votes. Um, we also created a new um, campaign called the Spring 2012 Investment Cycle, which is we currently have um, a couple opportunities in, uh, open where we're asking entrepreneurs, um, teachers, and um, out of school providers to come apply for our entrepreneur level grant. This is a grant that um, is somewhere between five to fifteen thousand dollars for a teacher or classroom or out of school program for a new innovative idea around STEM teaching. Um, so we have a cycle that's open right now, and it's the we're asking proposals by the first week of May. Uh, we also have another cycle where it's our portfolio investments, which is a larger multi year investment that we would make on an organization that's already doing STEM. And so what we did was create this investment cycle campaign. And all the activities that our staff, no matter what their role is in the organization, plays an active role in bringing in investments um, and people letting people know about these opportunities. So any email or meeting that you have or other activities, we are tracking against the 2012 investment cycle so that we can understand when people apply using our grants management system, we ask them how did they hear about investment cycle that we can app map our activities that we're doing to say this actually returned into this many more people applying for this investment cycle. So it will be exciting. This is the first time we've done this and to when we close our investment cycle to say how did we, how much more um, prospects did we actually have in the door as a result of our campaign activities. So I'm cl we'll close up here. Um, there's my email and contact information. Um, and as I mentioned, our goal is to reach more and more people in the state through our work. So follow us at WashingtonSTEM.org. We have a blog there that you can follow of our entrepreneur um, investments and read our activities on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. At this point, I'll pass it back to Kyla, who I think <laughs> will take any questions and wrap us through the the webinar. Awesome. Thank you, Suri. Um, that was really, really, really insightful. Um, really quickly, I'm going to just take control back. We do have a lot of questions that have come in, um, and I do want to try to get through as many as possible. Um, if for some reason we don't um, get to your specific question, I will make sure to follow up after the webinar. And so you will, don't, Never fear, you will get your question answered. And so, first of all, I know that there are a lot of questions that have come up about customization, um, i.e. how easy is it to customize um, with dynamic CRM um, and things like that. So could you speak a little bit to that end? Sure. Um, so this is Sean. And um, I would I would say you know customization can be different things to different people. So I'll speak specifically to the most common um, kinds of customization okay. that folks have asked, um, like adding a field. Um, to add a field takes no coding whatsoever. It is point and click. You do have to learn how to do it, just as you would learn how to do a mail merge in Word. But you can do it without any coding knowledge at all. Um, some of the other common customizations are creating your own dashboards and views and charts. Again, it's very point and click. There is a little bit of ramp up in learning how to do it, but it does not require any code. Um, if you go further down the path into um, more complex customization, so integrations with proprietary systems and that type of thing, then you do definitely have to get into a little bit of code. But um, and I did see one question out there too um, that web services in there is there are web services available for integration for for the person that asked that. 
Okay, great. Thank you. I was going to ask that question as well. Um, and then this question um, came from um, Nicole. Nicole was really interested in smart segmentation. Um, she wanted to know if dynamic CRM um, does smart segmentation of donors and can assign giving scores. Um, and she was really interested to see if Sri was able to do that. She just wanted to confirm whether or not Sri was able or not able to do that. And Sri, do you want to answer that or do you want me to take it? Question. Sure. Uh, go ahead and take a first crack. I guess, can you repeat the question as related to smart seg segmentation? Sure. So Nicole was wondering, yeah, can, you... can Dynamics CRM do smart segmentation of donors and assign giving scores? And then she was wondering, Sri, if you, if you were able to do that. So I guess um, I'll jump in there and then I'll let Sean kind of jump in as well. But um, that's kind of what we were aiming to do with the prob basically segmenting out um, the projected amount and the probability that we wanted to do against each of that projected amount. Um, I th do think that there's more that we can do in the sense of like um, understanding what I guess our various donor levels. Um, we actually are, um, our donors, the type of donors that we're trying to get in the door are, while we still value individual donors, it's really our strategic partnerships with businesses and they're, um, they're basically giving towards STEM education. So we're trying to understand who are those businesses that can make significant gifts and so we probably will um, be doing a little more work to classify and segment our businesses and understanding their um, essentially their revenue type of organization the number of employees and what's their ability to give okay and I will I will jump in just from a wider perspective um, you can certainly do um, segmentation of your donors your constituents etc and I, I would infer from um, from the use of the term smart segmentation is that you actually want to have the system do some um, some calculation, if you will, of some of that segmentation based on other activities or characteristics of a given constituent or organization. And what I would say is that you would probably use what is called a workflow um, that can be a set of if and then statements that can update information based on other other pieces of information. So um, it, it is more about how you define it than, uh, in, or it takes a bit more time to define how you want it to calculate that than it does actually to set it up. OK, thanks for that clarification. Um, and then we had a question, um, another question from Nicole asking, does CRM have the ability to automatically schedule mailing polls and reports? Yes, it does. OK, great. And Steve was wondering, is there a data conversion program provided? There is an import and export capability from Dynamic CRM. And in the import wizard, you can set up um, specific um, field mappings and value mappings. So in that in that respect, there is a, a utility built within Dynamic CRM to do that. Um, exporting, you can export out to um, to CSV files of all of your data. Um, if you get the on premise, of course, you have the access to the back end SQL Server databases as well. So you can you can use that to do a fair amount of your data integration. Okay, thanks, Sean. And then um, we are almost out of time, so I'm just going to ask one more question. And any of the other questions that we have not gotten to, um, I will forward to the presenters, and we will follow up with you afterwards. Um, Nancy was wondering, and I think either Sri or um, Sean could talk about this, is uh, what do you estimate the consulting hours or just this, the hours in general to be for the setup or customization phase of Dynamic CRM? You want to jump on that, Sri? <laughs> sure. Um, I'll go ahead. Like I mentioned, that we really tried tried to keep um, our scope really limited for this first phase, so we could understand how we wanted to use it going forward. And so we actually scoped out um, a level of effort with Sean and Npower. Um, I think we're getting to the stage where you know some of these customizations that our team to be enabled to do them on their own, but. I think we um, we got kicked off in December. There was 
um, I would say a handful of hours by NPower's team to um, do, implement the nonprofit solution and implement some customizations. Um, we were actually worked internally to do all the imports. And then um, there's been a few hours here and there come January and February for basically end user training and then helping us get up and running on the dashboards. Right. We, um, what we did for... for Sean, anything else you would add? Yeah, I, I would just add that, you know, each, each implementation could potentially be different. Um, but what was nice about Washington STEM was that we really did have a very, um, a very well-defined scope to start with um, for the first phase. And I believe um, that the total, the total amount of effort that was, uh, that was estimated was about 40 to 50 hours. Um, and we haven't quite used that up yet, so. Okay, thanks for that. that. Gives you a sense of at least a very basic one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, again, thank you both so much for this really, really enlightening presentation, and um, thank you to Microsoft for your for your cooperation in allowing us to to provide this webinar. Um, again, if we did not get to your question, we will follow up with you afterwards. Um, and thank you all for being with us today. It's been a really, really great experience. A little bit about who TechSoup is. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, just like a lot of you out there. And we are trying to provide you with technology and technology resources um, to help you fulfill your organization's mission. And we do that in a number of ways. Some of the resources are, are, that are currently available on the TechSoup website. You can find um, some articles in the Learning Center. Over here you can find some blog entries in the blog. You can find out more about um, TechSoup for Libraries at Libraries. And don't forget to subscribe to uh, the TechSoup newsletters over here at By the Cup, a new product donation alert. And again, thank you all for being here with us today. And we will be um, sending you the recording as well as all of the links and the other resources that we talked about today. And again, one big other thank you out to, out to Citrix Online, who does provide the GoToWebinar product for our use. So we really want to thank you all. And again, thank you to Microsoft, thank you to all our participants, and thank you to the presenters. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, Kyla. All right, thanks. Thank you.